Hey guys, welcome back to Through the Woods 360. Chino, why don't you tell them what we're going to make today? I know it's one of your favorites. It is. Guys, we are camping, and today we're going to make one of my all-time camping favorites, good old-fashioned chicken and dumplings. Stay tuned. First of all, we're going to start out with our chicken. We're going to get it cooking and then we can talk a little and get some other stuff ready. So, I don't know what's up with chicken nowadays, but these are the size of turkey breasts. But that's all you can find unless you buy a whole chicken. And we're trying to make this a little simpler. So, I'm going to dump this in my pot. This pot that I got here, oh heck, I bought this years ago at a flea market. And it's got this strainer. I don't know if you can see those holes in there, but it's got this strainer basket. And it's more of like a I don't know, a blancher, or we used to call them corn cookers. But it works good for this when you're camping because it strains out your big pieces of bone, which makes it so much easier. And we got a little strainer to get the little ones. We don't want any chicken bones in it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this going. What I'm using here is I'm using two chicken breasts with the bone and the skin. Because if you try to do it without the bone and the skin, it's certainly gonna be faster. It's gonna cook faster. It's not gonna taste as good because your flavor comes from the skin, the fat that's right under the skin, and the bone. You get a lot of flavor from that bone itself. So we're gonna ha have to add just a little bit of extra water here because it's got about this much space in the bottom um, that where this sits down in there. Hey, we Les, while you're, while you're prepping there, how about uh, talking about the equipment a little bit? I know we made some changes from our last video. We did, we, we, we did. Um, when I'm adding this water here, I certainly don't want to totally cover the chicken um, because it's going to be way too much water by the time we take this pot out and actually get to cooking our dumplings. So, what we're doing here today is last time when we did our uh, biscuits and gravy, we showed you the, the new camp oven, the camp chef stove, and um, the, I think, it, Cabela's camp kitchen. Um, and those are all kind of expensive items, not super expensive, but a little expensive. And we wanted to show you that you can make just as good of food on a budget. Um, you can use any pot, you can use your kitchen pot. This, this stove here, I just bought this, always wanted one, $30 here, let me, on Amazon. let me pan out a little bit so we can see that stove. $30 on Amazon. It's, 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 it's a crazy. Coleman, it's a Coleman butane canister stove. Canister is, is right in there, it locks in easy, it comes out easy. It's, that's how it locks in, just with a little lever. It has a, just a regular igniter, no batteries. It's, it, it seems like it's going to really be a great addition. Boil, simmer, either way. So it looks like it's going to be really awesome to have, and we're going to show you that you can do this on, on a $30 stove instead of a $200 stove or whatever that unit costs. You can do this on an open fire, quite honestly, but any pot will work on here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to light this, and we're going to get our chicken cooking. And in that chicken... We're gonna throw about, that's about the equivalent of, if you buy a whole chicken, it's about the equivalent of a whole chicken. They're huge. Some growth hormones or something going on there. But So we're gonna throw about four bullion cubes in here and we're gonna get this going. And you, you guys take a break. We won't, you take a break. We'll have you back in a minute once we get this going and then we'll start cutting up our vegetables. We'll show you what we do there. Okay, so we got our um, chicken in the pot cooking and I put four bullion cubes in there, and oh, ants, it's the joy of camping. And you'll notice I reserved two, and we'll talk about this later, but that wasn't an accident. So we're gonna add um, a little celery and some onion and some carrots to that chicken as it cooks. We don't want a whole lot, especially not carrots. Carrots are pungent, so if I add them to like the beef stew, I usually cook them first and then add it to the stew after most of the stuff is already tender. Otherwise, everything tastes like carrots. So, and I guess if you really like carrots and you want it to taste like carrots, that's up to you. Go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna let um, Gino maybe peel this onion here, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get some celery now. And guys, we apologize. We're a little sweaty, but it is 
About it's 90 warm. degrees today, so. It's warm, but we're thinking fall. We're thinking fall, and that's why we're thinking chicken and dumplings. And that's okay, then y'all can try this out at home before you go camping. So, I when I use celery to cook with, celery is um, pretty fibrous. It's stringy, I guess you might want to say, but I always take out the inside stalks because, number one, I think they have better celery flavor, but number two, they, um, they're not... They're more tender, so they cook up better. So we're gonna take this, and yeah, this was rinsed at home, and that's about all that got done to it, but it'll be all right. So we're gonna cut off our ends, and I'm gonna use some of these leaves, like on this inside one, and especially this one. Those leaves have awesome celery flavor, but when you get towards the outside and they're this dark green color, I don't know if you can see that, they get a little tough. So, I'm going to take about these three small stalks of celery. Gino's going to work on dicing up about half of that onion. That's a pretty big onion there um, for a whole chicken. About half of a big onion, a medium, equivalent to a medium-sized onion. And that's all relevant to how much you like onion. So, I'm going to take this celery and I'm going to dice it pretty small. And if you see me crying, I'm not sad. It's just the onion. Matter of fact, I'm pretty happy because we're in my happy place and Leslie's happy place. We're in the woods. It's always, always good in the woods. Everything is better in the woods. I can't say that enough. I know. I know. I think I say it all the time, but it's true. It's my happy place. We, you know, so. we we basically grew up being in the woods. Our our dad and our mom took us camping all the time, mushroom hunting. And we just we just grew up being in the outdoors and being in the woods and it it something we fell in love with as youngsters and we're still in love with it today. We didn't have a lot of money growing up as kids and you know in 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 the woods like you said we go mushroom hunting from when we say mushroom hunting around here in Illinois it means morels. Morels, there is only absolutely. One kind of mushroom. And if you ain't never had one, you got to find some and you got to get some because they're amazing. Well, this is a big onion. This ain't working. So out my celery ain't working too good today, now is it? But, but anyway, uh, we used to go hickory nut hunting too. You know, we didn't have any hickory and trees. And walnuts. Yeah, walnuts. Uh, but hickory nut hunting was oh, an awesome time of year. And if you've never been around in the woods around a grove of hickories, it gets this awesome smell from them holes that are on those hickory nuts, and they all fall to the floor of the woods, and they and they start to decay, and it gets this real fruity smell. Well, uh, yes, to me, to me, that will always be the smell of fall. And it was really a favorite time of the year for us because when we went nut hunting, it meant one thing: that Christmas and Christmas cookies were right around the corner. Yeah, there were a lot of Christmas cookies. Our grandma was a big Christmas cookie baker. But uh, as a matter of fact, the dumplings that we're going to make today are just like the ones that my grandmother used to make for us almost, when we were little. Almost. Grandma didn't use my secret ingredient. And, no, she did not. But but y'all will. The process is exactly the same. It's simple. It's simple. Now, if you get into those rolled dumplings, um, it's a little more difficult. But we, we never even called those dumplings. We called them slickers, and Mom used to make them with ham, like when you had a leftover Christmas ham or Easter ham. Yes, she, she did. She would make uh, what we called ham and slickers, and it's basically just like chicken and dumplings, except for you're putting the dumplings in with ham and ham stock instead of chicken. But it's tasty, too. Very, very good. It was one of my favorite birthday meals growing up. Mm. I'm not getting through all the way to the bottom of this cutting board with this table. I'm bellying out. I ain't slicing anything. Yeah, well, I, I keep hitting the crack in this table. And I it's think that's a problem. Not making this chopping very conducive. However, it is camping chicken and dumplings. And you know what? This A couple of big chunks of onion aren't the worst thing in the world. I love onion anyway. They're going to cook up. By the time that chicken they cooks up, they'll be cooked up. They'll, they will. They'll, they'll. Would you like me to... Work on a to, carrot. To work on peeling it after you dump this in that pot. All right, we can do that. Okay, we're cooking pretty good, but 
um, these big breasts are going to take a lot longer to cook than, well, not necessarily than a whole chicken, but if, if you use a whole chicken, I always cut it up. And you want to know what? You don't have to know how to cut up a chicken to cut up a chicken, make chicken and dumplings. It doesn't matter. All you're going to do is just cut it up and, and get it in pieces in here. And I know that sounds stupid, but you're just going to take this off the bone and tear it up anyway. But I'm just trying to get in here to get some space between the chicken, the meat, and the bone just to get a little faster cook time because this is not what I'm used to. Is these Things have changed our way here lately and I don't know about your way but you know even when we were kids chicken breasts were smaller and they've been big for years but they're ginormous now. I mean you got even chicken wings. Go, go to the store and buy chicken wings. They're the size, the drumettes are the size of a drumstick. And I know it's because they're trying to make more money. And here you go. Look at this. Right. Well, right we... here. Right here. This is the chicken tender. Can you see that, Gino? Oh, yeah. See that? That's a chicken tender. Yes. Now, all I did was get in between this one breast, which you can't get in the other one, but I got in between this breast here. This is huge. When and, we were, and I just when busted we were that kids, out of there. kids, a, a, a good sized stewing hen was about the size of a Cornish hen now. We might need to. I mean, We're they, still doing they have gotten ridiculously huge. So anyway, we're going to put this lid back on here, cover, and we're going to cook her a little bit longer. We're cooking good. I'm just going to see if I can get in here and break this up a little bit more. And, but it's, it's, it's cooking good. You know when it's done, it's not like frying chicken. Frying chicken is kind of hard. But you know it's done when the bone starts to pull away from it. And I broke that one apart, so we're not going to look at that one. But we're going to get a little peek at this one. Yeah, see, we're still all holding together real good, except for where I broke that tender out. So she's going to cook a while. And it's taking so long because these are big. And I probably should have cut these down, but... Ain't no good way to cut down a breast. So we're going to let it cook a while longer. Um, and I know it'll only be a minute for you, but it'll be a lot longer for us. But why don't you guys be thinking about what you'd like to see us make next? You know, everybody has their favorite thing that they'd like to learn how to cook or they'd like to cook while they were camping. So you give us your ideas and we're, we're open to, to suggestions. Whatever, whatever you want to see, we'll try to do it. As long as I know how to cook it or I can learn how to cook it. So just give us a holler. Yeah. Put a comment. And Leave it in the comments below, you know, whether it's something you'd like to learn how to do out camping or something that you'd like to see us do at home. Oh, I do want to. I do want to add a note in here. You'll see we got this yellow here. That's not all fat. Okay, some of that is actually color from the carrot. Some of that is is a bullion itself. But there is fat in here. So if you're opposed to fat, you can skin your chicken and try to trim off a little. That's where most of your fat is. Is actually in that skin. But don't ever get rid of the bone because the bone is where your flavor is. I mean, the flavor is in the fat too. But if you can't have the fat, I understand. But don't get rid of the bone, whatever you do. Okay, let's have a look. It's been, I don't know what, you know, about 45 minutes to Yeah, an hour. I'd say about it that. It takes a while. It takes a lot longer when your chicken breast is get big. A shot so, of this goodness in see here. See in there? Oh, now, now, now look here. Okay. Now we broke some of that up, but you see how the bones are cooking out of the meat? That's what you want. Because then you know it's done. So we're going to turn this off a minute so we can save a little butane. butane. Yeah, these actually run on butane. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull this out of here. And that's why I like this. I, can, can you get a shot of that, Gino? See how all this is draining out of there? Let me see if I can get in there. No, on yes, the bottom, I underneath can. it. Underneath it, you can see. Well, yeah, yeah, I can get in there. So okay. we're going to let as much of that stock drain all out of there as we can. All we're going to end up with is just chicken and bone. And a couple of veggies. And we don't care about those veggies being in there or not. It doesn't matter. No, we don't. So. They're all going back in the pot eventually. Everything but the bones. Alrighty. So, I mean, I got a little hanging in there. Where in the heck did that go? Here it is. Alrighty. So we're going to scrape a little of this out of here. Alrighty. Just and I know I'm on the back side of you. Kamikaze by a big okay. horse fly. So. We're going to take this and we're going to set it aside over here out of the way where it can cool because we're done with this portion of this pot. Well, 
she fell on the ground. Well, she'll cool on her side too. Okay, so we're gonna take this with this because it's insanely hot right now. I mean, heck, it was just boiling. So we're gonna take this and we're just gonna spread it out. Piece of skin there. And once this cools a little bit, what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate the meat from the bone. There's another piece of that chicken tender. See how that just pulls off of there? It's on this piece. This is a piece that runs down. Um, I guess it would technically be the sternum on a person. Um, the chicken sternum. I don't know what they call it, but we're just going to spread this out like this. We're going to prop this up on something so we can get a little airflow underneath and it can cool off a little. And that while strainer we're at might it, work less. Well, no, I'm, I don't want to smash the strainer. And while I'm at it, I just burn my fingers. I'm, Put that lid on there so we don't get any ants in there you know i know when you're outside cooking like this you got ants and flies and mosquitoes and tree bark and leaves and god only knows what out here and you know it's not gonna hurt you i choose to try to keep it out of it because i don't like legs in my teeth so anyway but it won't hurt you if it gets in there so we're gonna break this up a little bit because it'll all be broke up when we eat it anyway and we're just gonna let it cool and then we're going to get the bone in and out. And I showed my brother how to do that, and that's going to be his job. Hmm. Hope I don't cut myself, y'all. Good. So I'm just pulling the good meat off these bones. Kind of like what you do if you was at a family style. Uh, fried chicken dinner and you're eating a chicken breast except you can't really lick your fingers in between well who says you can't in, unless you're just cooking this for yourself and you're not having some camping neighbors over it's all for going back in the pot <laughs> if you're having some camper and camping neighbors over for supper you might not want to lick your fingers in between oh speaking of camping neighbors you know why don't you tell them uh, about we took a trip here a couple years ago to the Smokies and we camped up there somewhere Late in October there. of 2019 well actually it wasn't in the Smokies it was actually we not in, not in the park it was in the Appalachian Mountains of, of, of North Carolina but close to the Smokies we were camped in the mountains of North Carolina for a week in late October of 2019 and we made this very dish over an open wood fire and we had some two old boys one was from Georgia and one was from Pennsylvania and they were camped down the way from us and we made this big pot of chicken and dumplings and it was way more than either one of the two of us could eat so we invited them down for supper and they came down and graciously accepted our invitation and they ate and not only did they have firsts and seconds but they took about a half a pot of all the leftovers with them back to their campsite and said that it was the best chicken and dumplings they had ever had since he had it from made from his own grandma in Georgia so that was a pretty good compliment this is a really good dish that stays there but we're gonna Take the rest of this juice and this pan here that we cleaned our chicken off into. We're going to dump this through here just in case <coughs> we got any small pieces of bone. <coughs> okay, we got to hurry up here because I'm melting. Okay, so, <laughs> so got our grandma's bowl here. Ain't no Rachel Ray bowl. This is authentic. This is was my grandma's when we were kids. So we're gonna, Melmac, whatever they call it. Texas where it says on the bottom. Anyway, we're gonna throw two bouillon cubes in here. And I normally bring a Ziploc bag to do this, but you know what, let's face it. We don't remember everything. Well, we forgot more than one thing. Stick that paper in my pocket. So I'm gonna take my spoon here. The same spoon I talked about in the biscuits and gravy episode. Um, we got a couple of things here actually that are the same. Uh, our baking mix that we use to make our biscuits and our mill knot that we use to make our biscuits and that's to make our dumplings too. So if you can see in here I'm just mashing this and 
make we're gonna make our dumplings out of this pioneer baking mix so it's a little sticky you know it's bullying it's hot out here been sitting in the sun for 45 minutes to an hour so we're gonna grab a little of this baking mix <clears throat> And I know I should really measure this, but I'm not. So I should put a little of that in there to try to get this to mash up without staying in one big lump. So we don't want this in one big lump. We want this little bit of goodness mixed all throughout those dumplings. And this is the secret, is that juice has all the flavor in the world in it. But these dumplings ain't no different than a biscuit or a pancake. I mean, pancakes, see? Pancakes. Ain't no different. Let me, let me, it, it's, it's the same Pioneer. Same thing, everybody knows. Pioneer baking mix that we use to make the biscuits. So we need and to if make you, it. if you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to check it out. Yeah, biscuits and gravy are easy. Anyway, so we want to make this savory. And not that biscuits and gravy aren't, but we don't want to make pancakes for sure. But So we're going to add this bull, these two bouillon cubes in here. And then we're going to take this onion powder. And we're going to add a little onion powder, just a little uh, half a teaspoon, whatever. Depends on how big your pot of biscuits is. Depends on how much you like onion. Then we're going to grind up some fresh ground black pepper. I like fresh ground black pepper. I don't like that stuff that's pre-ground. It really loses its flavor. So we're going to mix that up in here. And I just had a drizzle of biscuit mix in there. I didn't have much. So and like, it's like biscuits. It's not rocket science. Nothing really needs to be measured. But look at this. Look, look this is the coolest thing ever. Watch this. See that? That easy. And they all fit together. Coolest thing. So I got to use it just because I bought it. Cheap. Anyway, so let's just say, because I have no idea how much this takes. I ain't never measured it before. Let's take a cup. And I got a little pot there. The bigger your pot is, the bigger around your pot is, the more dumplings you can fit in it because they got to sit in the juice. Doesn't matter, you can't go under the juice, they got to sit on top of the juice. <clears throat> so I'm going to take maybe a cup. I was going to say maybe about a half more. Maybe a cup and a half. I ain't operating this bag too well. <clears throat> Maybe a cup and a half. Now, the thing that changes it from dumplings to biscuits or biscuits to dumplings, that's about a half, is how much milk you put in it. It's the same thing. And then when you do pancakes, it's the same thing again. Well, for biscuits, it's your driest. Then you add a little extra, extra mix or less milk for dumplings and even more milk to your biscuit mix for pancakes and then pancakes you want to throw a little oil in there or a little melted butter and some uh, uh, cinnamon maybe definitely vanilla I'm not big on cinnamon so here's our can of mill nut guess what we got no opener Gino forgot to bring the opener there's always something you forget so, so we're gonna improvise well first I'm gonna mix that up in there my onion my garlic my, I mean my onion my bouillon my pepper Okay. Look just, at that. Just fine. You just make do. Just Talk like downtown. You. Downtown Jimmy Brown. Okay, so we're just gonna mix this basically the same way we mixed up the biscuits. Only it's just gonna be a little runnier. And you know what? If you get too much milk in there, you can add a little more baking mix. You just got more, more dumpling mix, which is exactly what I did. So it it won't break the bank if you have a little extra that you're going to throw away, or you can thin it down even more and put it in the fridge or your ice chest and use it for pancakes. Well, I know more. we don't want chicken pancakes, so no, we're gonna <laughs> no, we do not want chicken. Pan chicken and waffles is okay. Chicken and waffles is okay. Chicken pancakes not too good. So you see, we're just going to grab a little extra mix, and we're going to mix it in. There are, there are very few things when you're cooking that can't be fixed. 
baking is a little bit of a different story. There are certain ratios, and we have to maintain those ratios. But cooking, it's easy. It's still a little, still a little too much. The more liquid you got in here, I don't know, it seems like the longer it takes to cook it. I don't know if that's true, but it is. seems like it is for me. I haven't done the research. I'm not really a research kind of person. So that's looking pretty... That's looking pretty good. See that? That's looking pretty good. So question guys, have you all thought of what you'd like to see next? If you have, leave it in the comments down below. We're looking, we're looking for suggestions for new content to see what you, what you guys would like to see us make. Let's bring her down here and look inside Out here pot. or in the woods. All right, let's walk we're down here and check in this pot. this pot. Let's see what's in this pot. Let's see if we're back up to a boil. And we should be. Oh, beauteous. Oh, yeah. We're boiling. Now, this is easier than pie. Y'all ever try to make pie, you know what I mean. We do that. Stick this in there and get it wet. Push her off. If you get her wet, it keeps it from sticking on it too bad. And we got to eat off these spoons later. Because we're camping, we ain't bringing extra. That's right. Less dishes at the end of the day, the better. And we're just dumping them in the pot. And when we run out of room... Maybe I can get a little bit closer and a little more overhead here. There we go. When we run out of room, we're just done. And then that's just all the dumplings we're going to have. But I don't know. Yeah, that one's sitting here. We've got to turn her up a little bit unless we're running out of... No, we're still boiling. No, no, I, I I turned her down a little bit because it was just boiling away with... They got to be boiling. You got to got to be boiling no when, you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you drop your dumplings and they got to be boiling or they'll go straight to the bottom. That boiling water keeps that bottom of that pot moving and it works the dumplings up to the top. It doesn't let them settle. If you turn it down and it quits boiling because you turn, took the lid off and you're adding cold dumplings to it they'll sink to the bottom they'll stick to the bottom and they'll burn to the bottom you know and then it's going to make everything taste burnt and nasty and disgusting so you need to have it at a rolling boil when you drop your dumplings in about the only thing i can think of that would finish this feast off blackberry cobbler <laughs> uh, well well i didn't think of that but now that you brought it to my attention <laughs> no i was thinking about some good Home baked hot buttered bread. That'd be good. But you already got dumplings. We do, we do. Although I, I, some of my fondest memories of my mother is when I would come home from school in the winter time and she'd be baking bread and the whole house smelled like it was just Kay. amazing. Now we're gonna take this lid. I don't know if you can see in there and see if it's got a good shot. You can see those dumplings in there. But we're now we're gonna first we're gonna knock that off of there because that's yucky. And we're going to let these cook. They need to steam. The bottoms are in the juice and they're cooking, but the tops need to steam. And they're going to get bigger and fluffier. And when they're done, we're going to eat. We'll be back in just a few when these dumplings are cooked. Okay, we're looking pretty good, but um, you kind of want to just... That's why I like this. I, I use this for everything. But uh, get in here and just kind of go down around them so they don't stick to the side. But... We're cooking good, and the ones on the outside are probably done already, because they're on the outside where there's more heat, but if you can see the difference between like this one, and this one, and this one, and even this one a little bit, but then compared to these, see how these look a little more solid? And these are just kind of, I don't know, they're all wet, but they just look a little different. Just let it go a little longer. A little more doughy, maybe. You know, all you're doing is adding to your gravy that's in here. You know, your biscuits kind of cook up, and I even threw that last little piece in out of, out of that, uh, give it a good stir out of, out of the when I was dropping the dumplings in I even threw that last little piece in because it's really not going to make a dumpling but it's gonna make to this gravy and this will all get thicker as it sits and you're not going to want to eat it as soon as it's done because it is insanely hot yeah somebody technical can tell me what the temperature of boiling chicken this, stock <laughs> boiling dumplings are but probably close to water Are y'all ready? We just waited a couple minutes. Turned it off, let it cool a little bit. Only cooked about another two minutes. 
after we left you last time. Oh, look at that. So, we're going to dig down in here and get us some chicken. Look at that chicken. And a couple dumplings. And some juice. How many dumplings? One, two, three? Oh, one's enough for me. We got two. Well, I'm not going to complain. Dumpling hiding in there. You see that? Okay, that is enough for me. Now this juice that's in here, you can save this and you can mix up with your chicken and your juice, you can mix up more dumplings and you can make more dumplings. So if you were going to serve a big family this and all you had was this little pot, when these dumplings were done, you could take them out, you could put them in a bowl, cover them with some foil, drop in some more dumplings, make some more dumplings. By the time, you just, you just can't let the dumplings sit on the bottom. <clears throat> as long as you got enough liquid in there to actually have the dumplings be floating, you're good to go. You make as many dumplings as you want. But this was enough for us and enough to show you what to do. Let's have a taste here in a minute. Alrighty, let's hey, see how she go. is. Maybe a little dumpling. A little chicken. Mmm. That is some good eating right there, I'm telling you. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Well, y'all can follow us for some more videos. We're going to, this Pioneer Baking Mix, I'm trying to show you how when you go camping, you could take one box of mix, the same box of mix that we used last time. There's still more left, and it wasn't full when we started using it. And next time we're going to make something sweet with it. We're either going to make a blackberry cobbler or, uh, what do you think, Gina? Blackberry and, cobbler well, or pancakes. Yeah, unless, what do you think? Unless one of our viewers comes up with an idea they'd like to see, we may do something different. Well, but, uh, yeah, uh, send, us a, send us a message, you know, what you'd like to see. If not, we'll just keep plugging along doing what we normally do when we go camping. And if you like this type of thing, please hit the like button. It helps the channel. And consider subscribing to our channel, three, Through the Woods 360com We'd appreciate it. We're just trying to help people to have the most enjoyable experience they can have when they're out camping. And I'm telling you right here, this is enjoyable. Okay, you guys. Well, until next time, y'all take care, and we'll catch you Through the Woods 360 on the backside. Welcome back, guys. Cheeto. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Okay. Take two. <laughs>